Hello and welcome back to Scarborough and again we're back here to look at the central tramway in the South Bay area of Scarborough. Now after I put my video out about the tramways in the Scarborough area and also the pier, the guys at the central tramway reached out to me online and they said why don't you come and have a look round and we'll show you how it works. So here we are, so we're going to have a look behind the scenes at this funicular tramway which is known as the central tramway. So I'm just boarded in the uh, carriage now. We're about to descend down. So I've uh, got the automatic door behind me. Let's go to the front and uh, I'll show you. Oh, off it goes. It's a very nice, uh, smooth ride, I must say. Okay, we're just passing the other one now. down to the beach which is very very busy today but as you can see it slows down just here this is where the brakes kick in you can feel them as it just slows it down to a gradual stop so there's no sudden smashes into the buffer down here easy as that the authentic and straps here as well. I love the uh, interior of this, very Victorian, love it. And here we are back at the station. Right, so I'm here with Helen from the Central Tramway. Now, I was just going to ask Helen, this is the only one that's private in Scarborough, isn't it? That's right. It's been owned by the same family for over 60 years. So same family yeah. for over 60 years. Now, that's quite an accomplishment. Mm. Uh, the other one is Scarborough Council, am I that's right That's correct, so, yeah, the spa. Yeah. So that's the council run one, the spa lift, which is, uh, I don't know, half a mile down the road. And, and then this one. Slightly older than us as well. Slightly, slightly older. Slightly. Only slightly, not much in it. <laughs> this is my favourite because it's, it's more colourful for a start and it takes you right to the centre of town, which is great for shops up here. Absolutely. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. yes. Shops and beach. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, Helen's just showing me some of the stuff they've got here, which she said should belong in a museum, but. Nobody wants it, do they? No. <laughs> but there's a letter here. Yeah, it's dated 1899, as you can see in the top corner there. Um, alterations to shop adjoining Central Tramway. That looks like a planning application, doesn't it? That's right. Yeah, and there's uh, plenty of these old letters and uh, an old, is that a, an old logbook of some sort? Indeed, yeah, it's an old ledger. An old ledger. Salaries. This is, uh, what, eight, 1959. 1959. It goes right back to the 1881. The salaries and wages from 1959. Wow. Wages have not changed much these days, have they? <laughs> yeah. So imagine working here, in this office, with that view. That's amazing. If you're in the Scarborough area and you're up near the Grand Hotel or down on the promenade and you fancy a ride on this funicular tramway, you can't miss it. It's on the seafront and obviously at the top of the hill here. It's a lovely cafe outside as well. Just let us know when is it open, when does it operate? We open from 9.30 until qu quarter to ten at night, oh, every wow. single day, so we like to be consistent. It's £1.20, that's it, one way. There you go. Um, consistent, yeah. yeah. So is it all year or is it just certain seasons? Or? Certain seasons, just at the time, but certainly if there's a customer demand for it, we'll be open all the time if you want. <laughs> there you go, so get using it and it'll stay open all the time. <laughs> One for you railway lot out there. Helen has just told me she used to work for GNAR, so she's in your boat. <laughs> right, so Helen's going to take us into the engine room, so we're going to see something behind the scenes. And I'll show you lot how it works, how it operates. So we're just stepping outside the station building here. See the tram's making its way down. So we're going to head down these stairs. 
and we're going to see the uh, bowels of the engine room to operate the tram. Now Ellen were just saying they spent a lot of money in recent times on upgrading a lot of the workings of this tramway because they want to keep ahead of the times and make sure that it runs constantly. Now I've just spotted the first thing. There's a big flywheel there. Look at the size of that motor there. You can stick that in your Ford Escort, would you? So we'll see that moving when it moves in a second. I think they're just loading up upstairs. You can hear everybody up there on the floorboards. But all this, she was just telling me as well, the whole building is completely original and they've gone back to the cream and red colours quite recently, which is they think is the original colours from the early days of the tramway, which I really like. Well, I think it's about to leave. I can just hear it gearing up. There you go. I love the sound of that engine. Now you said it was steam powered originally, this one, yes. wasn't it? Yes. So it's run by steam. And uh, not today, obviously. We'd be, we'd be filled in here with steam, wouldn't we? Is that electric now, I'm presuming? It is, that's All electric. Yeah, Helen was just saying as well, it's very well maintained in here. Everything's freshly painted. It's really, really tidy, I must say. It doesn't look like my garage at all. My garage looks like I wrecked it. But this is so well organised. And the most important thing, they've got Yorkshire tea over here as well. So on this sign up here, it just explains. You can just see the image in the middle there, that's how it operates and you can see the two sheave wheels or sheave diverters they're called, the two wheels above it. They're up there on the outside and I'll show you them when we go out and the big red wheel there is in the middle. So basically the cables come in around them wheels down around this big red one here and then back up and back down again. So it's just basically uh, up and down motion from the cables. So I was just asked, gonna ask Helen, uh, obviously it's an electric motor but what would happen if you had a power cup. We've got a generator, a good old Jenny. Um, and basically what we have to do is we've got a brake system down below which we obviously have to um, release and, and to do manually. Um, and then there's a gearbox down there. So basically we have to um, disconnect it to actually then manually pull the... the so they've yeah. got to disconnect the big wheel here or the big motor and stick the generator on to power it. Easy as that. But they can keep it running, can't yes, you? Yes, yes. Well, so, yeah. even in a power cut, you ain't going to get stuck. So, obviously there is the actual motor itself. You've got a brake pad there before it goes into the gearbox here. So this is the giant gearbox. And then it turns the flywheel, like I was saying. But you can see the massive brake disc just down there. That's obviously to slow it down from the gearbox as well. And you've got brake pads on the actual wheel on either side. Which is what we heard squeaking a minute ago. So Helen was just saying, if you're interested in all this kind of the mechanics behind this tramway and having a little behind the scenes tour, she was saying they don't mind if you want to email them or message them on social media in advance and pop down and have a look. They don't mind showing people it, as I found out myself. Also, if you just pop to the top station, if they're not busy, they might show you down here as well. So if you just ask at the top. Doesn't hurt, does it? Oh, no, it doesn't I'm always scared of asking, but you just ask. I mean, ask for Helen. Ask for Helen. There you go. Helen, you know, show me round, and they're willing to show you because coming from a railway background, yeah. she knows how you guys feel and how you want to see this kind of thing. So, if you just fancy it, ask. It doesn't hurt. So we've just left the workshop. So you've got the giant red wheel in there, and you can just see the other wheels here. So this is where the cable comes back up and over these flywheels, and underneath the track here. You can just see the wheels going round. I'm fascinated by all this and all these moving parts here. But Helena shows me most of this is original from the Victorian era. Obviously things have been maintained and replaced, certain parts have been replaced, but a lot of the mechanics on this system is original. So we're going to get a nice unique shot from here now. We're stood right in the middle of the track, right next to it as well. So here you've got the raised section, which you can see the stilts underneath uh, as it heads up to the top station and then it turns into like a, a concrete foundation under here where it sits on the hillside. But we're about to see one of the trams passes. And she was just saying as well, Helen said that the, the gardens, I mean, I don't know if you can see the flowers and everything at the side, they're maintained by a lovely gentleman who 
loves to do the gardens around this site, which keeps it nice and tidy. All right, so the tram's on its way up now. We're about to see it in action right from the side of the track. Not many people get this view. And we're going to see them cross right here. There we go, that's a unique shot, that. So you can see here we've obviously got the outer rail and the inner rail just there. Ellen was just saying they've got the four cables in the middle which take the weight of the tram as it goes up and down but there's also another cable in the middle if you can see that where the wood is. That's a safety cable so if anything was to happen which it won't to these then they've got a backup as well which is great to know. You were close up there of the uh, tracks. So just a bit more information, the bottom station there is actually a dummy station. It doesn't do anything in terms of the drive system for the tram. So the cable just literally goes underneath the bottom station there, around a drum and back up. So all the, the mechanics and the engine work is done from the top station here. So Helen was just saying, obviously on a night, they parked the trams right in the middle here, which you would have seen in my last video. They were both docked right in the centre here. Which was just saying all the, the lights and everything on the actual trams are run by batteries. So they're, obviously it's not, it's not a powered rail, so it has to have its own power source. Which was just saying they use these cables here, you can see, in these uh, plug points here to charge the trams on a night while they're sat here and parked up. So we've got privileged access to the control booth here for the tram system. The nice modern control system there. An e-stop button, start button and a dead man's switch. Brilliant. Just like a train. We've got a nice little bit of a signal box just there as well. So we're just saying the green lights at the top are letting us know that the doors are closed in the bottom station down there. And this one is ready to go. So we're going to finish loading this and then we're safe at this end and they can send it down. Right, so Helen's going to send it down now. She's just pressed the button to close the door. There we go, the doors are closed. All green at the top. She's just pressed the bell to the bottom station. And then pull the dead man's switch and off it goes. You can see the modern computer system here as well, simulating exactly where it is. And then it comes. So we'll manually break. I say manual, it's not manual, it's automatic, isn't it? The computer system's breaking it at the top here. We're good to go. There we go. Doors open. And out they get. Oh, look at this, the original turnstile. The Isla turnstile. The Bear Lane in London. It's got the original stamp on it there. The original Victorian turnstile. But actually underneath is it's like the clicker so it tells you how many customers have come through the day. And also got a counter under yes. there as well. So you can work out the customer numbers. Amazing. And the original cash box here as well. All modern today. Well, I hope you enjoyed our look behind the scenes at the Central Tramway in Scarborough. Like I said, if you want to come and have a ride, please do come down. And I want to say a big thank you to the guys here at the Central Tramway and also Helen for showing me around today. It's been absolutely fantastic and I love showing you guys behind the scenes as well and I've enjoyed myself thoroughly. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week in a new video. Bye.